Hello, the Shem Kitov. Welcome, everyone. I am Rivka Malka, and it is my absolute privilege, honor, to welcome you to the Geula Gathering. We tonight are welcoming women all around the world, all across the United States, in Israel, in Antwerp, Berlin, Gibraltar, South Africa, Sweden, Manchester, Montreal, and Paris just to name a few. The world tonight is dotted with sprinklings of women dancing, singing, giving their hearts completely over to Hashem in a great, big, united yearning. Hashem, we are ready for the Geula. We know, we know that you only have the best gifts in mind for us and we are ready to receive them. This whole gathering started in the most miraculous of ways. There was a video, just a small little WhatsApp video, that was being circulated around. And on that video was myself speaking about an event that was going to take place on February 26th. And I said, women, let us unite in Ahavas Yisrael. Everyone, come February 26th, let's storm the heavens. I didn't put that video on WhatsApp. I don't even know how it got there. It's a miracle. But the video made its rounds, and before you know it, I got emails. We want to make an event like this. This sounds so important. We want to live stream your event. But there was only one problem. That event had taken place seven years ago. But when I saw that all of these women were coming together and their hearts were just burning to express their love for Hashem, to express their yearning for Geula, I said, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it must be that you have planned the date for us. Chaf Bez Adar, February 26th, let's unite in our yearning for Geula. And from that moment on, we set the intention that there will be a worldwide yearning for Geula. And so it is. And so we find ourselves here tonight with over 75 locations dotting the globe, the gathering of the women. And tonight, we evoke and we experience the spark of Miriam Hanavia, Miriam the prophetess that lives with each and within each one of us. Miriam tended to the women. In their hardest times, she told them, there is hope. Keep having children. There will be an end to this slavery. She told them, we will be redeemed. Get your tambourines ready. You think that this is life? That it's always going to be so hard? No. There will be a time when we will dance. Women, get ready. From the time she was the littlest child, she stood for hope. Tonight we come out and our prayers take on a very special significance. Because we're not only saying, please, we want Geula. Please, we yearn for the day when the whole world is filled with peace and love and the knowledge of Hashem. We are saying, we know Hashem, that underneath all of this that we see is already the seed of Geula. We see it, we experience it, and tonight we express it. And so, we are coming into this evening with a twofold agenda. First of all, to embody Miriam, to sing, to dance, to gather together with the women in the circle like the tambourine where each of us is equidistant from the center. One is not more important than the other. We are all, we all have our place in this world. From the fanciest person to the least fancy person, the greatest person, the smallest person, there's really no such thing. It turns out we are all equidistant like the little bells around the tambourine. We embody Miriam in her hope and in her knowingness that Geula is not only on its way, but the little tambourine is the seed of Geula already now. And secondly, we stand together as an Am, a nation. The way that this gathering worked was miraculous. And how does a miracle happen? By everyone realizing that we are not separate pieces, but we are one entity. When we created these gatherings, it took every woman to come forth and say, I will contribute, I will contribute, I will work hard, I will not be an ego, I will only be in pleasure, in joy, in love. What else can I do? What else can I do? Coming together truly like a family. The process of gathering and creating these 70, 80 gatherings out of thin air happened because each person realized 
The Jewish people is one family. We, our generation, is the reincarnation of the souls that left Egypt, where we went from being the 12 tribes of Jacob, the 12 Shvatim, to becoming an Am, a nation. Tonight, let's keep that in mind as well. Let it be a reunion of the Am. We are leaving the Exodus. We are coalescing into one Am. We already began that process through creating these gatherings and it's only going to continue. Everything you say, everything you think tonight has special significance. There is a great light happening in the world right now. There are things going on in the upper worlds that we know nothing about. All we know is that this date in the calendar, this is our opportunity. So let's use it. Let's focus our intention that we are an Am, we are a family. Let all our words at this gathering be words of love and friendship and hope. Let us bask in the knowledge that Hashem loves us to no end and that He has planned a wonderful Geula for us and it starts here in this seat of love and unity from one to the other. I bless you women. I love you women. Have the most beautiful night of your lives. Hello to all the precious women around the whole world gathering this evening to pray for the Geula, for the redemption, for a world full of good, full of Shalom. Two times during history, during Jewish history, were women gathered in Atfila, only of women. It's something that was then very, very rare. Their Tfila did miracles. The first, times we, the first time we were told about such a Tfila was when Leah sees her sister Rachel in distress because she has only one son, Yosef. Each and every one of the servants, Bilha and Zilpa, have two children. Leah sees she is pregnant again, so it means that her sister, Rachel, will be deprived. Even the servants, Bilha and Zilpa, would have two tribes and Rachel would have only one. Leah sees that she is carrying in her womb another tribe. She wants Rachel to have it. So, so she's having a very, very wow idea that was never before. She gathers the women of Beit Yaakov, the house of Yaakov. They stand there together according to our sages, according to Chazal, and they cry their hearts out. Lo tetze zot betza'ar. We do not want Mother Rachel to be in pain. We want her to have another tribe for this holy nation. This women's gathering, Chazal tell us, caused a huge miracle. The son that was in Leah's womb turns to a girl, Dina, and Rachel has the tribe Binyamin. In his part, Beit HaMikdash would be built. This, this can be the result of Atfilat, Nashim. With all their hearts, they are making a huge venahafoch who everything turns upside down. They are creating the place where Beit HaMikdash would be built. The second time we hear of a tefillah of woman is Esther HaMalka. She is the shlicha of Am Yisrael, she has to go and beg to Achashverosh, the wicked king, that he won't kill all her nation. What does she do? She fasts for three days and she calls her 
seven best friends. Esther v'na'aroteha. She was there with them for many long years, four years in the palace of Ahasuerus. She teaches them what praying means. She teaches them what Shabbat means. She teaches them that a woman is a queen. Af ani v'na'arotai atzum ken uvechen avo el hamelech. I'm coming to the king surrounded with these holy women. This tefillah, again, women's tefillah, saved Am Yisrael from being killed, brought such a v'nahafochu, turned everything upside down. When a woman is praying, when a woman is davening, he merachemet, in Hebrew means womanizing. She puts the world inside her womb and she davens for it as if she was davening for her own baby. And she is nourishing it and she is waiting for it to be revealed in its most beautiful way. I want to teach you what a woman is and how she womanizes the world. When the first woman on earth was created, her name was Chava. Ki hi haita em kol chai. Because she was the mother of humanity. But she was not a mother yet when she was given this name. So why does the Torah say hi haita em? She was a mother. And Rabbi Shimshon Raphael Hirsch explains, M is from the Hebrew word Im. Im means if, condition. The condition of this world, the condition for it to exist, to be beautiful, to be full of life, is the woman. He haita ha'im shel ha'chayim. She was the if. She was the condition of the survival of this beautiful world. I want, before we all make together this tefillah of women all around the world, I want to quote a beautiful tefillah that wrote a beautiful girl that was murdered cruelly just one and a half week ago. Her name was Ori Ansbachir, and she wrote those beautiful words. Sheyehe olamech, olam shel shalom, shalom olamim, shalom alumim. May your world be a world of peace. A world of eternal peace, a world for peace for little children and young women and young men and old people. I want us now to gather, all of us, for a tefillah, for a prayer from the depth of our hearts. We are the condition of this world. We are those that empower it. We are those that give birth to it every day with our tefillot. We are those that make the place for this big Beit HaMikdash that will be built very, very soon. Nachon yihye Beit Hashem berosh kol heharim v'naharu elav kol ha'amim all the nations are going to come to this holy place to pray. But the ones that are going to be given the priority places are Kahal Gadol Yashuvu Hena, Bam Iver Ufiseach Hara Veyoladet. 
in the primary, in the primary places, in the uh, first class, the Mashiach will say to all those that would want to enter Beit HaMikdash, Rega, Iver Ufiseach, the handicapped, the blind, those that cannot walk, Hara Veyoladet, the woman that nurtured this world with their tefillot, those that put the world in their womb, that davened for the world, that it would be Olam Shel Shalom. What does Geula mean to me? Connection, unity, supporting one another, coming together for good, like thousands of women have done tonight. But how can we concretize this feeling and carry it over into our daily lives? I'm lucky enough to work for and be a member of Ner Echad, which is a simple, powerful, automated system that unites Jewish women every single week in our Arab Shabbos mitzvot. You're about to see a short video about how Ner Echad started in memory of Rebetzin Kanievsky. Rav Chaim Kanievsky, her husband, has said about Ner Echad that never in the history of the world was there a movement like this that increases the power of our mitzvot week after week and the tremendous bracha that it could bring to Klal Yisrael. Hopefully your host has printed out this flyer. If it's there, please take one home. It has more information about Ner Echad. But it's super simple. It takes a quick minute to sign up and then each week you'll get the name of another member somewhere in the world so you can have her in mind when you light candles. And it's so comforting to know that someone else out there every week is having you in mind for your specific needs as well. All the members donate one dollar together so we're all part of this huge worldwide Arab Shabbos tzedakah every week. Bringing another woman into my prayers, Arab Shabbos, fosters empathy, unity, and it makes me feel like I'm part of something bigger than myself. It's amazing to be part of something so uniquely unifying. There are members from every kind of background all over the world. The comment that I hear most from members is how much they love the feeling of connection, the feeling of bringing the Geula closer week after week. So I hope you all join. Enjoy the video.